what's up you guys welcome back to my channel my name is Ashley for those who are new here hello and welcome and for all of my returning subscribers hey so today I wanted to bring you guys in my kitchen with me really quick for a fast video so a couple weeks ago I shared with you guys my recipe for fire cider and in that video I told you guys that I will be bringing you guys back in here with me to make more medicine for my family so I have two things that I have going on as you know from the title of the video but I need to make some elderberry hi. syrup hi and I also want to try my hand at making my own apple cider so in this jar here these jars I have collected all of the peelings and cores from the apples that I recently processed I made some apple pie apple pie paella. I made some apple pie filling as well as some applesauce I do have a video on the recipes that I use for that so I will make sure to leave that in the card all right so I wanted to do things just a little different the recipe that I will be using is actually from the roots and refuge uh, blog I've followed this recipe now for the past three years I think it's been about three years yeah, I want to say at least three years, but instead of simmering it all on top of the stove, as you can tell, I got a little one running around and I can't necessarily keep my eye on something for 45 minutes and I just want to free my hands to do other things. So I am going to put it in my crock pot. So I have all of the ingredients spread out here um, and I'm also going to add just a few other things and I'll kind of explain as we begin to pop everything in the pot. All right, so the first thing I will be adding into the pot is three and a half cups of water. All right, next we are going to put our elderberries in and I will be using three fourths cups. And I'm trying to use up the rest of these elderberries. I actually purchased these online. Um, I'll link the, the specific company that I got them from, but I actually harvested some off of my property this year, which was like a significant harvest. But yeah, anyways, back to this. Okay, so next up, we are going to use some rose hips. Rose hips are extremely high in vitamin C, which for obvious reasons will be amazing for flu and cold season. And we are using one half of a cup. We're going to put three cinnamon sticks in here as well. Okay. Those. And I am actually going to use some whole cloves. The recipe calls for ground, so I'm just going to use like, I don't know, possibly like, what is that about? Six of these. Yeah, six whole cloves. And then I'm also going to pop in some anise. I'm just going to put two of those in there. And then the last thing that we need to add was some ginger. And I actually meant to get this prepared before this video, but I didn't. Please be careful using knives because, listen, I did not follow my own advice and I don't know if you guys can see but I cut my thumb up pretty good I have liquid band-aid on it right now so it's totally fine so let's pop our ginger in there as well and then the honey that I will be using is local um, it is pure raw honey, and this is actually a buckwheat um, 
batch I don't know the blend or I don't know but um yeah it's it's a local honey so I'll be using this once we let this go for about eight hours at low in the crock pot and it really is just as simple as all right next we will be making our apple cider vinegar at least starting our apple cider vinegar it looks like that this is like almost equivalent to making kombucha which i've done plenty of times before i don't believe i've shared a video on that but basically it's a fermentation process where you add liquid and sugar to the contents and over time it will create alcohol is my understanding of it but um it creates like this bacteria so you'll get like a scoby formation situation with this and everything at least just from what i read this again is my first time ever doing this but the recipe pretty much calls for water um obviously your apples and then in the recipe that i've read you can add like a little bit of uh apple cider vinegar with the mother in it to kind of like kick start the process so um, I basically am doing one tablespoon of sugar to each cup and so to kind of help me you know gauge how much I'm just going to start with you know just one of these jars and I have four cups of filtered water in here I really want to stress like using filtered water when you are doing like a process like this where you want the good healthy bacteria to get going um, same thing with kombucha <laughs> So let's go on ahead and get four tablespoons of sugar in this water here. Oh, you guys might want to see what the heck is going on, huh? There we go. Three and four. It would probably be a little better if this water were just a little warm. It is room temperature. I'm not gonna stress it though, because I mean, the sugar is dissolving, but I'm sure it'll just speed up the process a little bit if it was warm. And excuse me, because I keep sniffling. I am extremely congested right now. It is just that season for me, the start of fall, the start of spring, all throughout summer, honestly. Um, I just have that issue. All right, our sugar is pretty much all the way dissolved. So let's go on ahead and pour this in. And I wanna say I may do, I'm thinking like maybe one fourth of a cup of the apple cider vinegar. Let me get this wiped off. So let's do one fourth of a cup of the apple cider vinegar and then pour the water over. Ooh, I think this was pretty much perfect. Yeah, so the four cups is like pretty spot on for what I have going on here. And I have these all the way jammed up in there. All right, and since this is a ferment, you definitely want to make sure all the contents stay under the water. And for that, I will be using the mason jar fermentation kit i really like the the spring situation it just kind of holds everything down this doesn't always work well with things that are like a lot smaller because they will kind of like you know make their way up through the spring but for things that are a little bit chunkier like these apples it is absolutely perfect so She's living her life. She's living her best life.
so that is it for our apple cider here um again the process hold on let me let me read before i just get the run in my mouth all right so it says set in a warm dark place for two weeks um so typically where i like to put my stuff is just over here in this cabinet here and i will show you guys an update on some other things that i have going on in there soon but um two weeks after two weeks it says to strain out all the solids and then you want to extract a little bit of the extra liquid you can taste it at this point but once you take the the solids out you still have a second ferment for another four weeks and then at that point it will be complete so all together this is a six week process which is nothing new if you've made kombucha if you've made sauerkraut if you made fire cider it's pretty much like the same length of time so i am going to put these again down in my cabinet i'm gonna pull out some other things to show you guys because i've been i've been busy All right, so here is some sauerkraut that I recently made um, using Mommy. some some items from a farmer's market, a local farmer's market that I go to. I did not do well with cabbages, but that is not to say that you cannot ferment or preserve your own food. I highly suggest actually getting that practice in whether you're growing it yourself or not. But here is some sauerkraut here that I have brewing it's only been going for like maybe about a week so that's the first thing that I wanted to show you guys and here is an update on my fire cider so this is the one that I made with you guys which was heavy on the elderberry which is why it's this beautiful burgundy color and then here is another round that I started that is heavy on the turmeric and sage. I had a ton of sage from the garden. So this one is like heavy, heavy, heavy on the sage and jalapenos and stuff like that. But you can see it's more yellow. So I'm just trying out different things um, with this batch, which is why it's not as filled in the jar. Um, I actually ran the ginger and the turmeric through the food processor and I actually ended up going back in with this other one here um, just fishing out what I could to like grind it down just a little bit more just so all of the all the goodness can extract from it my little one back there I know y'all are looking like what in the world is going on right there? her hair is wild she ain't got no pants on we're at home what do you all right, so I will be back on later on once this is all complete. I decided to go, I decided to go on ahead and put that on high for roughly about four hours. I'll check it and see what the consistency is and everything like that at that point and decide whether or not I want to take it a little bit longer or not. But I will be back with an update in a little while. All right, so my crock is all done. I ended up going for six hours at high and I feel like that was absolutely perfect. Not gonna be able to see this very well, but this is what it's looking like. So now what I'm gonna do is strain it just directly in this cup here so I can mix up the honey it probably can cool for like a little while longer before I add the honey. So I just want to get it strained so I can extract as much of the juice out of like the elderberries and everything. And then once it cools down a little bit more, we'll go on ahead and add our two cups of honey because I ended up doubling up the recipe in the crock pot.
All right, so, so far I have about four cups of the syrup here. And what I'm going to do is again, put this in a different container just to allow this to cool down a little bit. I'll actually probably stick it in the refrigerator just to speed things up. That's another good tip when you just wanna rush things just a little bit more, refrigerate. But um, from here, I'm also going to use a, um, what's it called? cheesecloth we're going to use some cheesecloth to give this one more final squeeze to get all the juices out of these berries and everything else and then we will add our honey i'm about to make a huge mess y'all i might regret this just putting it on my countertop like this but I don't want to dirty up a bunch of bowls. Nor do I just have a whole lot of cheesecloth laying around. All right, so I've let this cool off in the fridge for a little while. So now I'm just squeezing out. This looks really gross. <laughs> I'm not gonna say what it looks like, but if you know, you know. <laughs> All right, so now we can go on ahead and add in our honey. This looks to be at least a cup and a half, and then I have some more that I can probably scrape out. The only issue is this stuff is so thick <laughs> that I'm really gonna struggle here, so. I'm probably just going to say F it and cut this whole thing in half because I'm scooping out whatever else is left in this anyway. So to savor me the embarrassment, I'm just going to do this off camera real quick and then I'll come back and show you what everything's looking like. All right, I got it open. So I'm just going to use this little spatula here. Alrighty, so now that we have this all stirred up and happy, 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 I'm just gonna run half of this through the strainer one more time just to catch any bits that we may have missed. And then also I see that there is still quite a bit of settling at the bottom. All right, there we go. Some beautiful elderberry syrup so now you can just pick your vessel of choice and store it in that this should keep in the in the refrigerator for at least I want to say the recommended time is within like six months and then you want to make another batch however I usually have mine in my refrigerator at least a year I only make this once a year so you know do do with that what you please All right, so cheers, here's to good health. Tastes great. All right, so I was able to fill up two jars of, I was able to fill up two of these bottles and also a jelly size, what is this? What size is this? I don't know. Um, but I will be giving this to my mom because I know that she will appreciate that. And I, 
All right, you guys, so that is pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you all enjoyed watching me as I made some more medicine for my family. Again, this is something that I highly recommend. I will make sure to leave links to the recipe that I used below and any additions that I added to the recipe. So yeah, again, I thank you all so much for coming by. I wish you all health, wealth, and prosperity. And until the next time, peace out.